Today on Sagittarian Matters, we talk about cannibalism, we get angry over ice cream, and we offer sage advice on vegan health, travel routines, and more with my very special guests, Morgan and Kaya Wilson. Stay tuned. Good morning. This is Don Riddle here with another unsolicited food review. Um, Morgan and Torrance gave me something called avocado, which is an avocado coffee. Um, It says half an avocado of healthy fats. I don't know what that means. And here are the things about it. It's vegan and dairy-free, two different levels of vegan Nut-free, non-GMO, gluten-free, ethically sourced, and keto certified. Um, And it has avocado base, which includes avocado oil and powder. And it also has monk fruit and Himalayan salt and sunflower lecithin and uh, gel and gum. And I'm ready to try it. I'm, um, you know, like a true gentleman uh, of a cup of ice. So I'm not drinking it right out of the can. It's a canned coffee. Okay, that's the opening sound. Um, I think monk fruit is is sweetener. I don't know what it tastes like, though. Okay, it's in the cup. Now I'm going to sip it. Okay, well, to start, it has like an oil slick on top, but that's fine. Oh, oh, no, 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 mm-mm, oh, it's horrible, Oh, yuck, yuck, I, I think I need to drink some water to get it out of my mouth, it's horrible, mm, oh no, it tastes like, I don't know what monk fruit is, but I think it's like a stevia taste. And it basically is like you have to take a dose of extreme stevia and they try to make it go down easier with the hint of a coffee taste. Um, my review is the shit is nasty. It's real bad. I hate it. And uh, I'm sorry, avocado, but this is um, a horrible taste. Hello from the Sagittarian Matters Social Distancing Studios in Florence, Oregon. Listeners, I'm so excited this week to bring you a show that is full of advice questions, full of vegan food, and includes two very special guests, Morgan and Kaya Wilson. Kaya Wilson, also known as Spouse to the Show, is a musician and a positive reinforcement dog trainer in Portland, Oregon. She's played guitar in the band Team Dresh since 1993 and has been working professionally with dogs since 2012. You can find Kaya on Instagram at dogspeedtraining or on the World Wide Web at dogspeed.dog. Kaya joined me today to taste test ice cream, vegan chocolates, and to give advice on finding home wherever you are. Morgan is a frequent contributor and a very special friend to Sagittarian Matters. She's the former purveyor of Dovetail Bakery. She loves dry, crunchy foods more than anyone I know. And she joined me this week via Zoom to give vegan medical advice to a listener. Now, please enjoy my talks with Kaya Wilson and Morgan. Kaya Wilson, I have a terrible terrible surprise for you Uh as we are about to embark on a tasting of a strange ice cream you got at a fred meyer in florence oregon Uh 
So you and I have been living for the past few months down the street from a salt and straw in Portland, Oregon. Okay. We've eagerly awaited their flavor changes. Uh Uh-huh. Because the last vegan flavor, which didn't impact you, but for me, it was a, it was some kind of disgusting sorbet. Yeah. It was bug juice sorbet. Yeah. So the non-vegans got like a s'mores, a mushroom medley, just some different decadent campfire flavors. And the vegans got bug juice. Yeah. Is that bl- bug juice? It's, it wasn't just strawberry? No, that strawberry is the weird one they have on their menu all the time. Oh. And Bug then- juice is like a fruit punch. Oh, gross. Okay, so I'm going to read you the ingredients of Salt and Straw's. Salt and Straw just today announced their spooky flavors okay. for the coming season. And all you're right. not going to believe what kind of bullshit they're pulling on vegan system. I'm going to believe it. <laughs> I'm totally going to. Here's the description of the ice cream, which is called Double Bubble Toil and Trouble. In the middle of our lab, a cauldron boils. Into the pot goes every color of fruit, while puffs of ethereal blue fizzle and shoot. Under midnight's dark cloak, elements together boil and smoke. Our kitchen together had their fun, creating this potion of bright bubble gum. Take a taste, bubble and blow, for this is one potion that will steal the show. Give me a break. For who? (laughs) Four-year-olds? I don't want to eat gum if I'm eating ice cream. Well, so it's 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 Halloween. They're talking about a cauldron. You, I mean, why don't they go for a class? And why can't we have a pumpkin cream? Why can't we have a pumpkin bread? Or you know what? Oh, because you trick or treat on Halloween, they can extend. They could extend it so far Mm. to make a bubblegum ice cream in the middle of the damn autumn. No. No way. I say no. I I stand up and I say no. There's so many. Just give give people something creamy. Give them something that tastes good. (laughs) I want to just... Not for a... You know, no offense four-year-olds out there listening to the show, but (laughs) not really for a four-year... I mean, that's a four-year-old's... This is a damn vegan. Vegan. I want. That's for a four-year-old man. I'm fucking 40. Okay. Here's what's in it. Coconut cream, sugar, bubble gum. I don't want that. What do you mean? Actual bubble gum? Actual bubble gum. Banana puree. You know, I'm not against that. You know we're going to try this, though. Pineapple juice to concentrate. I am against that. Natural blue color from spirulina. I'm into that. Natural clear vanilla extract. Vanilla extract. Pear extract. Cin- just give me a break. I don't know. We're going to try it, though. That's the thing. It. You know, oh, I'm absolutely going to try it. And yeah. I just, I'm going to say, give me a break, salt and straw. I do too. I mean, they just give, give, if you're going to do that, just give something that's just like a nice, basic, like pumpkin, like a pumpkin, give it a pumpkin latte, a pumpkin bread, a, um, what else do we like? Well, popcorn. I mean, you could do like a popcorn. Uh, what are those things? The popcorn balls. What are those? You just smash them together with like caramel. Well, yeah. Rice, anything. I don't care. Anything. Come on. Something, just something that just basic that tastes, tastes good and creamy, like what you want when you say, I want ice cream. It's, you know. I don't want to chew gum. I'm eating ice cream. I'm going to choke on that just, gum like a dog. My, 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 my main thing is more, more, more flavor options for vegans. Like, find, do, so, do a vegan version of the, what they have that is a good ice cream. I think a solid ice cream is their salted ribbon vanilla thing yeah just do the vegan version and have it always there give something that's always just delightful to most people instead of the the freckled mints who cares about that the strawberry sherbet i just sherbet all right let's try it what do you have here this is by the makers of kind bars yeah i who apparently have a real close friendship with fred meyer and co (laughs) okay what is this this is a this is a, a dark chocolate peanut butter plant based cream. I you know my I eyed it because I do love a peanut butter chocolate ice cream. And I eyed it not knowing it was plant based and got pretty excited then when I saw plant based there. Well, we're seeing the Kind Bar logo. We're seeing some swirls. It looks very mm-hmm. standard. Let's crack this open. You don't want me to talk about what's in it yet. Let's crack it open and then right. we'll take a look here. Classy. It's a classy foil. Kaya Wilson, you have just opened up. The kind frozen. What do you see on the inside? You know, I see a 
what 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 looks un, like uh, chocolate peanut butter. You know, it's got a kind of consistency there that I guess is peanut buttery. Um, yeah, I smelled it already. I'm gonna say it smells like a Cliff Bar. It smells like a Cliff Bar. Can you tell me what the first ingredient is, please? <laughs> it's, it smells a lot like a Cliff, like a creepily like a Cliff Bar. Okay, the first uh, pear pear juice. Everybody's no. favorite. Everybody's favorite from concentrate. And then water. Everybody's favorite ice cream <laughs> is usually pear, pear, pear wa- and water. And then we got some peanuts. Yeah. Do you want me to keep going? If there's any, anything that sticks out to you. I mean, there's chicory, you know, chicory root. That's a, that's a fan. No, that's not a fan favorite. That's a favorite of many a, yeah. a, a vegan delight. All right, um, let's, let's get into this. Yeah, nothing, nothing. There's a bunch of gum. A lot of gum out there for the gum phobic out there. Now, are we talking, what's the sweetener? We just have sugar? This almost seems like it could be a corn syrup joint. Sugar. Hmm. And tapioca syrup. Hmm. I have some too. Yeah. It, it's, un, it's unfortunate. It tastes like a, a frozen cliff bar that oh, got man. blended. Like you blended it and put pear juice in it. And then you, you blend a bunch of cliff bar, peanut butter chocolate cliff bars. And then you put pear juice in there. And then you freeze it. And that's this. <laughs> You know, like how Cliff Bar's peanut butter has that particular almost rancid flavor to it? Yeah. Like that elderly, super overprocessed peanut butter flavor. Like the sugariness of a Cliff Bar feels unholy. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. and that's from pear. And that's happening oh, here. This really? is really it is from pear? Well, I don't know. Oh. That's what I'm getting. This is sad. This uh, this is okay. like being vegan in the nineties, but worse. Also look how rad it looks on the outside. <laughs> it it looks, looks like a delightful it, it, just a swirl, beautiful swirls of peanut butter with nice dark chocolate. What's it look on the inside? Up. It looks like a Cliff Bar that got blended with pear juice and then frozen. I'm gonna stick with that. Looks. I'm know. still eating it for some reason, but um, because I I really like ice cream. Okay, but if you had to choose, thumbs up, thumbs down. No, yeah, this is thumbs down in the plant based world of that I've had. Thumbs down to kind, frozen, dark chocolate, plant butter based. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. why they didn't just go for a classic, like an oat milk or an almond, some sort of nut. What the nut hell is the matter with that? Instead them? of pear juice. I don't really understand. I feel so angry today about ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, fuck this. Oh, fuck, fuck this ice cream. <laughs> fuck this shit. What is, I mean. And now there's some kind of angry machine coming around in the back of the audio. Come on, oh, yeah, mow them yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm well. Give it a shot. All right. Well, Kaya, thanks for bringing something <laughs> fun to the yeah. Sagittarian Matter Social Distancing Studio here in Florence, Oregon. Fun. My pleasure. Today's episode is brought to you by Josephine McRobbie, Emily Helmus, Maria Turner Carney, Laura Perry. Shoshana Ruth Wechter and Joey Soloway. If you would like to support Sagittarian Matters, in particular producer Chris Sutton, please send five dollars, five million dollars, that's your business, via PayPal to hornetleg at gmail.com. Or this just in, he's got a Venmo, Hell Books. That's H E double hockey sticks books at Venmo. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to to saying your name on the podcast. Producer Ponyo looks forward to it too. Don't be scared. That's just Ponyo's speaking voice. Okay, here is my vegan question for you. For most of my life, I have been vegan. I have had times in my life where I've had breaks, but mostly I've been vegan since I was 14. I'm now 37. And I keep becoming anemic and it's terrible. When I'm anemic, I have a lot of brain fog and I'm really tired and um, I am depressed. My skin is really dry. I can't focus. I have really bad brain fog. Um... I, in 2019, learned that I was super anemic, like almost needed a blood transfusion anemic, and I got 
a bunch of iron infusions and really focused on all the vegan things to get my iron up. And eventually it worked. However, it keeps happening. Every year since, I start to feel really bad. I get my blood drawn and I'm anemic again. And not just like a little anemic, but very anemic. Anyways, the non-vegan things that I could eat to fix this are shellfish, organ meat, and red meat. I'm very grossed out by all of those. I really love cows. They're my friends. Also, just for some science, sorry if this is boring, um, there are two kinds of iron. Heme is the animal iron. Non-heme is the plant-based irons. Non-heme is just not as absorbable. I do all the vegan iron things. I take supplements, I eat the foods, I cook in cast iron, etc. So, like, what, what would you do? You're a vegan, I respect, and I'm not, like, a vegan for fun. It's an ethical thing, so I just, I feel really confused. Someone mentioned that I could take beef liver pills as, like, a harm reduction tactic. That's interesting, I guess, and also disgusting to me. Okay, bye. From Anemic in Anacortis. Okay, dear Anemic, whomever you are. I Morgan, I know we're both doctors, I should say first. <laughs> oh, let me unbutton my white lab coat since we're off duty. What listeners don't know is that Morgan and I are both uh representative of the health industry. We've gone mm-hmm. through medical school multiple times. Uh, we both have active practices. This yeah, is medical advice. I have, like a huge face tattoo of those like winding snakes around the staff. That's like the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So got that. Here's what I told this person. I, uh, I texted this person back and I said, Hey, just, this might be annoying, but just for fun, are you getting down with impossible burgers? Because of course the big, this is not a cure-all, by the way, I'm not a doctor. I was just kidding. This is not a cure-all, but the big deal about impossible burgers was that they found a way to isolate heme and include heme in impossible burgers. This person says she's on the impossible burger train. She is, you know, maybe at her wits end about like how much of that she can eat. Spouse to the show, Kaya Wilson is, in love with Impossible Burgers, has many ideas. So listeners, if you have Impossible Burger recipes, the heme in that is substantial, I think, as a doctor. (laughs) As a Sagittarian scientist. Yeah, Sagittarian scientist. Okay, Morgan, take it away. This one really, you know, no pun intended, there's a lot to chew on. Okay, and again, to confirm, I am actually not a doctor or a medical scientist in any way, shape, or form, so please feel free to ignore absolutely everything I say. But, okay, so, like, we're looking at patterns, right? So it sounds like you were maybe anemic on and off occasionally, and then in 2019 was sort of the worst bout of it, and then every year after that, just several, um, it's happened again in a serious way. So it seems like if you're doing all of the stuff and your body is just, like, you're just resting in a bath of iron it seems like maybe there's something else going on it's not just that you need more different iron like maybe there's a problem with absorption doctors question um I don't know so it sounds like maybe there's something else going on and maybe that's just the symptom of something else maybe you already are aware of this or doctors are aware of this too but I would just say like your body has some wisdom in it and like trust that and if whatever all everyone is suggesting is not working then maybe it's time to like pursue other channels uh for treatment or like say like hey is there something else that we can look for or do your own research or ask your friends and community doctors are people and also all the stuff that comes along with being a person so good bad and otherwise but like they don't know everything and you're you you live in your body every day you have the most amount of knowledge about what it is you're doing or experiencing it's a lot to ask of someone who's feeling unwell to do their own advocacy and research but if you have a hunch that it might be something else or there's some other thing or you're like hey just help me this isn't working what else can we do find another doctor find another test find another community or find more of it I don't know but mm, 
I know every kind of doctor has their own angle. Yeah. You know? Like there's certain kinds of doctors that are going to be like, you got to eat meat. You just yeah. got to eat meat. That's your problem. That's the you root of gotta. all your problems is you're not eating meat. Yeah. I'm a naturopath or I'm this or I'm that. And I'm telling you meat is the answer, but then there's other yeah. doctors like Western doctors. will be like, who cares about your diet? Here's some antibiotics. You know, like it's just <laughs> different doctors have their different angles and it's possible, you know, and, and I'm not saying any of them are good or bad. I'm not here to say, cause I'm have no medical training and as a doctor pretty much live as a breatharian cave woman mm-hmm. over here, like making <laughs> chiseling my own teeth out of soap. But, um, try, I would, I would, I, with what's Morgan said in mind, I would try a different kind of doctor that is like so much less fun than anything you've ever dreamed of doing. I know everyone in Portland will tell you acupuncture is the cure for every single thing, no matter what, no matter what you ask community about, they'll be like, have you tried acupuncture? Mm-hmm. Have you tried breathing? Have you, have you, you know what meditation, actually, I don't know if you've heard of meditation at this point. And like tr- truly legit, important, but having only one avenue to fix every single issue just is like you know it doesn't make sense and I think that like a, a breadth of approaches and then you pick which one resonates with you or sometimes too it's just like maybe you take a different avenue to find whatever that diagnosis may be other than just like mysterious anemia you know that like no one's able to help you with and yeah. so if you're like well listen I gotta live in this body for the rest of my life however long that may be like find a way to get to the information you need and then you can make your own best decision about how to proceed with said information all that said you know so like this is the vegan advice this is this person saying you're a vegan that i trust what would you do so the first mm-hmm. thing i would do i mean i would try to find every everything i could that was not doing that's not choosing a cow over me mm-hmm. uh that's just what i would try to do because it just feels like sad it feels sad but you also got to do what you got to fucking do You know, Mm -hmm. we have a friend who had to get a kidney transplant at like age 30 or 31. And she was like, you know what? I have dedicated my life to veganism. I don't, I'm sure that the medicines they are giving me in the damn hospital have been tested on animals. I'm sure there's gelatin in these capsules. Like I'm like laid up just getting stabbed and poked with these things. And this is, this is it. I mean, this is all I need to be alive. I prefer to be alive. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening right now. So, you know, so then it becomes like a gross, would you rather scenario? Or we're like, would you rather Morgan eat shellfish, <laughs> organ meats, or what was that? Or I don't know. I can think Brains, of a lot of would bloody, you rather's that you. <laughs> I mean, the, would you the rather meat meat chew on iron shavings? Here's my question: Could you get someone's human placenta pills? Hey, this <laughs> show has really... never shied away from cannibalism. <laughs> not, not from the beginning. Not now. Can you get human placenta pills? I think you can. And those are very rich in iron. I am not kidding you. Wow. Not kidding. Yeah. You just do what you got to do. Um, I was going to say something. Well, it was. <laughs> you could hide it in the impossible burger, like a pill pocket. <laughs> get a greenie. Yeah. Just stick it in there. Go, go fetch. Put it in a peanut butter tong and work your way out. Well, I was just going to say like, listen, we're all old enough that like, we got to make some like nuanced ethical decisions. And sometimes that means whatever, you know, like there's just no such thing as getting to make your perfect decision all the time. I'm not saying you have to eat beef liver pills. I'm just saying like, maybe you go to a doctor that's like not your number one choice because they have some testing or information that will get you to the next point where you can make an ethical decision. Maybe you do one thing once a year that like gives you enough boost that you can do all of your other stuff for the rest of the year that feels like really right on with your own ethics and values. Like there are no, you know, like it's not binary. You guys, you ever heard just smash the system, just binary is 20. It's the past. But like, you know, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. Nicole's it's volunteering not, her placenta. It's also just for today, you know, like it could be that like you have to do something right now and that's just a bridge until you get more information about what happens next in your medical journey. Mm -hmm. So it could be, and I know that this, this author, this question asker has had to do this before with eggs or different things. They actually, I, if this is the person I'm thinking of, they got on an ex vegans website that existed where somebody called them out for eating eggs, which is like incredibly strange use of time is like building a website and be like, you said she ate what a Twix bar. She's going on there. (laughs) 
but uh you know this is just this could be just temporary this is you know you could be like i'm eating popcorn shrimp this week that's what I have to do. <laughs> i'm eating popcorn shrimp this week with a placenta chaser and uh, you know what but next week i go to xyz doctor and i'll have more information and there might be something different that happens or that gets diagnosed and this doesn't have to be forever you don't have to eat popcorn shrimp every day for the rest of your life <laughs> and you know what you heard it Ma- donate some money to some animal sanctuaries if you end up having to do something that makes you feel compromised you know yeah i I had to buy i didn't have to i mean i this is like we get into the pet food dilemma morgan i know you have to go but like my my dog had kidney failure at some point and i chose to make her food because the science diet food was so much worse and so i had to like go to the meat counter and be like hello i'm nicole george's and i'm here to buy some meat and it mm-hmm. felt horrible. I feel like I was killing my own heart. But then it was like, there was my dog and what was my choice? Right, exactly. Also, we're feeding our, I feed my cat meat every day. It's like the deal that we have made, we've domesticated. And by the we, I mean that, you know, historically, these the animals and they live with us and we care for them and we do things for them that, you know, like, again, it's an ethically nuanced this is young. I had to ask my mom to cook him some turkey for my cat when he was at the end of his life. I was like, I don't even know when it's done and I can't tell. Like, you know, like, yeah, it feels yucky to do it, but, you know, we can take a broader look at the big picture. Think of all the good stuff you've done for animals over the entirety of your lifetime and all the good you will do. It doesn't mean eat animals, but like, you know, it's okay to have nuanced thinking about this is maybe what I'm like trying to validate here. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's okay. We wish you the best. We wish you the best. We're sorry you're between this rock and this hard place. Mm-hmm. And we hope that it's temporary and that something, something more will be revealed. Yeah. And that like, you won't have to just like spend your entire life licking a cast iron skillet and swallowing supplements with like a, you know, impossible shot backer kaya wilson will you help me answer an advice question for the podcast today? yeah i will i'd love to i find that you're very qualified for this okay you toured for many many years I, indeed you have lived between here and there and everywhere mm-hmm. especially over the past three years mm-hmm. and especially during pandemic mm-hmm. as we have gone back and forth between los angeles and portland And here we are in Florence, Oregon. Yeah. This listener has a question about getting comfortable in spaces that are not your own. Wonderful. Dear Sagittarian Matters, do you have any advice on how to make an on-again, off-again home that's eight and a half hours away from home? I took on a job far away, and I have to go back and forth every three weeks or so. I'm struggling with finding a routine for those transitions between here and there. Thank you, Nicole. Signed, Overcome Overseas. P.S. It's an eight and a half hour train ride from where I actually live. So I have two pads. One with a roomie in Austria where I get paid. One by myself in Germany, close to my family and friends. I go back and forth between here and there. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Kaya Wilson, what are your instincts? What do you want to say? Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, from, from my seat, it seems almost like you could certainly make uh, that could be a really cool opportunity or there are cool opportunities within this even though i understand it is hard to be living in two different places and uprooting you know kind of more or less every every 3 weeks yeah i i one thing that i did when i was living in in two in between two places um for pandemic and i i had two sets of certain things that were really important to me to not have to haul from place to place so where you can afford it, if you can, like just like stuff that makes your life a little easier, like a, a like for me, it was honestly, it was just like a water kettle, a nice, a nice uh, coffee, some coffee, nice coffee, coffee stuff, basically mm-hmm. coffee. That was the main thing. And some, and some iron, cast iron skillets. Well, it's kind of like what parts of your routine are the most valuable to you or make you feel yeah. the most grounded. And so for you, it's like your oh. very particular coffee routine. Uh-huh, and cooking stuff like spices and stuff, yeah. like having like this set of my, my Maldon salt in each place. I mean, I, it sounds silly, but like when you forget something too, then you're, then you can be kind of bummed. That can be a yeah. bummer too. You're like, oh, I forgot the thing. So if you have two sets, 
you're not going to forget. If you can afford two sets of things that make you feel particularly at home and help you kind of just get into your routine in a different place, that's really nice. Yeah. Something I want to say to this person is don't be afraid to host things so that you can see the people who are important to you or the people you're getting to know in each place. Um, well, except for COVID. Well, there's COVID, but I mean like outdoors or oh, however yeah. you can. Even if it's just like a Zoom a Zoom night with some of your friends who live in your normal place while you're in the other place. Like go out of your way to make some ways for people to connect with you while you're gone. Yeah, I think that sounds wonderful too to make sure you're you're staying engaged uh, and relating to other human beings. Yeah. Um, the other part of this is the person has an eight and a half hour train ride every three uh, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I like that. I like that part. If, you know, my suggestion for that is to do some, to like create little projects for yourself, whatever those might be, whatever s- speaks to you creatively, whether that's writing uh, maybe reading and studying. See, I would like want to do a little studying. I would like do maybe some some webinar. Can you do webinars on trains? I would do um, I would do sketching, w- which is super meditative and very you know as you know a, a nice passage of time. Plus, you are making you could make something every train ride. Just take a couple hours of that long train ride or an hour, and then do do a pro- little project, and and that'd be my. This is my, here's my suggestion for the project. Because we actually started this advice yesterday when we really got to think about it. Mm-hmm. If I was this person's comics teacher or just their advisor who they're asking, I would say, and I don't care what your, I don't care what your level of cartooning is. I don't care what your level of writing is. I don't care. What I would want you to do every time you're on the train is make a diary for that day on the train. So the diary consists of these things. Number one. A self-portrait that includes your emotional state. What's going on? What's going on for you that day? How are you feeling? To the best of your ability, it doesn't have to look like anything. Draw yourself, give yourself a timer, four minutes, and reflect your emotional state. Then make a diary page that shows like 10 things you did that day, 10 things or on the train, 10 things you saw or heard, perhaps smelled, tasted, just get into your senses. What are some things that you saw or heard? And this could be as minute as like, I kept focusing on this like, you know, hot dog bun that somebody left on the ground. Or I kept looking at this like mask that somebody shoved into the seat cover. Like something very Mm -hmm. small that's particular to that time or a smell that roots you in that time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I would do that kind of thing. And then at the end of your time having this job, because certainly this is temporary, whether the temporary means for you a year or 20 years, You can go back and look at, maybe you could have them all in one notebook. You could go back and look at this notebook and see the passage of time and see like what your state was as you were going back and forth and all the different things that you saw. Yeah. I love that idea. I I, I second, I second the motion for, for that specific idea. I would read your, your train, your every three weeks train time, um, comics blog. Oh, yeah. If you made diary comic every time you went on this train ride every three weeks and you put it up on some kind of blog or your Instagram, I would love to read that from somebody over the course of a year. Yeah. And I just think, you know, more to me, more so for for yourself to just have this collection of something that you created in this time that you have that you just you have no choice. You had, you're on that train. So just and then at some points you'll be able to look back on that also and be like wow that this is what was going on this is what I or like if you're doing what what I learned what I what I created like if you're doing Duolingo (laughs) and you start a new language from zero just think about the words that you can write in your comic or like in your diary from the first day and just imagine yourself in six months yeah what words you're gonna know and you know yeah and then and then I would say if sometime you want to take a break or you don't feel like it or you just want to sleep or you just want to watch uh, movies or whatever, just, you know, do whatever you actually, what, what feeds you in that moment. But this could be a fun thing to look forward to that is a goal for the, the, um, commute, the yeah. long commute. So the commute doesn't just feel like nothingness, like more time out of your space. Right. Yeah. I know that we have a friend, Tara Jane O'Neill, who's a musician who moves around a lot, has moved around a lot, has toured a lot, and had 
some kind of little packet of items where she could set up essentially an altar wherever she went. So just like a packet of items that, you know, includes, I don't know if it's like seashells, photographs, knickknacks, wherever she puts them, that can feel like home just during that time. Yeah. And I personally, as you know, have traveled today with my houseplants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> we are at a cabin at the coast. I brought my houseplants. Yeah. It feels cool. It does feel cool. It feels like you, it's like a pet, but different. And it almost, you know, maybe there's a houseplant you could bring on, on, on that <laughs> would be okay. It's like a real durable, whatever. Yeah. Uh, easy going. Just a real happy e- to travel. I mean, you said yesterday an air plant. I did say air plant. You got upset, so I'm not saying it again. But, you know, you think if you just missed it, like a bromeliad, just give it, give it some mist. Make, you know, you can keep it alive. I just have found the air plants in my life upsetting. Because I've basically watched them suffer in many different locations as I've traveled around with them. Whereas like my oxalis that's 20 years old, yeah. I get happy seeing my plant thrive every place we go. Whereas the, the air plant was kind of the inverse of yeah. that. But that's just because it's small and if you don't care for it, it will, it'll die. I just or don't it'll, know. it'll wither. I just don't know how and I don't care to find out. Well, I, that's great. But maybe, maybe this person would like to have a small companion, which would be an air plant. Oh my God, can I tell you something that's going to maybe horrify you or make you think we're soulmates? Cool, yeah. (laughs) When I was in sixth grade, I brought my gerbil to school with me. Okay. I brought it in a tiny travel cage that I had. Yeah. And I brought, I put it in my locker all day. Oh. (laughs) It was a find. Yeah. I mean, I brought it to, I brought it to school. I wasn't supposed to bring it to school. Okay. You're like uh, Jerry Blank bringing Mm Shelly, the the turtle. Mm Mm-hmm sticking her in a locker all day yeah i'm not saying bring your gerbil with you but no i mean well i no you could you could you could absolutely travel no and yeah would i do it again no was i if i could live a ralph s mouse fantasy where the gerbil was in my pocket and having a good time maybe would i don't know that the gerbil would have been more happy in your pocket but yeah enrichment's great for all animals so if you do travel (laughs) with a small rodent (laughs) <laughs> a devil or a turtle so, you know treat it well figure out how how to make yeah that's a cool idea though i like this idea what i didn't get a rat get a rat <laughs> they love it they're lovely animals very smart oh yeah well kaya thank you for your advice today to <laughs> yeah. this person maybe don't get a rat i don't know you know just make sure you keep it safe i'm now now i'm backtracking on that last piece well now we're like telling people to bring animals yeah, into scary situations I, yeah, with yeah where they can't get away and there's limited let's airflow to, let's just go back to the plant okay let's go back to the or not not even the plant maybe just rocks. the bundle of rocks yeah, a rocks. nice handkerchief that you like right i would say what if you even had a special routine you did in each place like for me Something that gets me in the mood to do art is I put on the same playlist every time, which includes the song 16 by Kaya Bosa. <laughs> I put on a smock, and by listening to this particular soundtrack, wearing a smock and lighting one particular candle, mm. it sets my brain to know, like, I'm here, and here's what I'm here to do. Mm. Like, the cares of the world go away. It's time for me to get to work. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you came into each of your spaces for the first time after traveling, if you had the exact same routine. A smock and the soundtrack with the, my song on it. Yeah. Which, uh, whatever it is, it could kind of remind your body, like, this is our home for right now. Here's what we're doing. Yeah. You're like, I'm putting on Nina Simone. I'm lighting this candle that I bring with me both places. And I'm eating this meal that is particular to this place. Oh, I like that. Today's episode is brought to you by La Gusta's Luscious Chocolates. Organic, fair trade, always vegan caramels, bonbons, bars, and more. Made for you in New Paltz, New York, with passion and politics. Use the code SAGITTARIAN for 10% off your order at lagustasluscious.com. S-A-G-I-T-T-A-R-I-A-N. And hey, If you're feeling the Halloween spirit, try their dead inside chocolate skull full of vegan bonbons or the caramel and autumn leaves box filled with apple caramels, maple pecan caramels, and delicious chocolate painted leaves with vegan maple cream. You can follow Lagusta's Luscious on Instagram at Lagusta's Luscious for secret sales and behind the scenes candy making. I personally just stabbed open the chocolate skull and it was awesome. Anyway. 10% off your order at lagustasluscious.com with the offer code SAGITTARIAN. 
Kaya Wilson is currently eating a piece of the packing paper. Guess what? There's more though. There's more what in the is box. It? This is is this part of it though? It looks like the the packing mm. the packing paper? No, you can actually go further. Go further in. Go further in. What in the world? What is this? This is too cool. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> that is the coolest thing ever. All right, hold on. Okay. What do you see? I see a big hold this, hold this. skeletal situation. A, a, a skull. I see a really quite large and quite heavy skull. Uh, a small, a small, I, I guess a baby. A baby size skull. Must have skull. been a baby. Yeah. It but was it, at one point a baby. Okay. Okay, I have a knife. Oh, it is. It's exceptional. Let's look, though. I don't know if this was on purpose. It looks like you see veins. I mean, well, look I at guess, the molding of this. I guess we should take a picture before I... Yeah, yeah, definitely take a picture because it's teeth, very detailed. The teeth. I just want to start chewing on it. I know you do. But look at it. It's very detailed. Vein, veiny stuff. Like it's... Eye sockets. Just like Ponyo. <sighs> yeah. This could be Ponyo's head. Oh, wait, maybe that is... No, it's not. It's definitely it's not a dog. A, that's, a, that's, a ho, that's a homo. Okay. Safe. This is a handmade, organic, fair trade, vegan, white chocolate covered skull with a solid chocolate interior. Mm -hmm. We also have vegan marshmallows, not from Augusta's, but we can eat with this chocolate at any time. We're just looking to fully <laughs> sprint <laughs> like 20 miles. Yeah. Um, how do you like your chocolate? Oh, it's delicious. I'm, I'm, I've only started on the skull, the big, giant skull. You just started gnawing on the head of... I'm just literally I picked up a six-inch tall... I mean, this is like a... What is this? What is this? Like the size of a a, a heart. A, a, a human, literal human heart. It's, human it's heart. actually, yeah. This, looks, is, this looks like a human heart right here. Didn't we watch... We watched a long video from Caitlin Dowdy about the people mm -hmm. from Alive uh -huh. and what really happened. This reminds me of that. Like if we were traveling with someone... They passed away. This was our only option. This is what the, you're feeling like? What we would, I mean, obviously <laughs> we wouldn't need, eat the skull, but we might. But know. if their skull was made of chocolate, if you sure. if you were like, oh, Bill, I can't believe it. And, and then you find out Bill is made of chocolate. Yeah. That his bones were made of chocolate the whole time. <laughs> yeah. well, wouldn't you be a little a bit excited? For, fortunate, fortunate uh, person to have that particular accident with. Would you feel a little bit like that canceled out the perils of cannibalism? I mean, oh, absolutely. Like the quandaries of cannibalism? You'd be like, oh, well, course. Bill lived a good life until the past two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I was made of chocolate. Sagittarian Matters is produced by Chris Sutton with assistance by Ponyo Georges. Our theme music is composed by Carolyn Pennypacker Riggs of the band Bouquet. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.